All right, well, it's time to record another radio broadcast this week. We certainly are thankful for the opportunity to do that. And we're thankful for those who watch and listen and like and share our videos on our social media uh, outlets. We thank you so much for that. Well, we've been in Psalm 16 for a while now. We're going to continue in Psalm 16 today. Amen. Well, it's good to be back on the radio again today. We certainly do appreciate the good Lord allowing us to be able to come to you by means of radio. This is the Bear Trail Baptist Church broadcast, and I certainly am privileged to be the pastor there, Brother Tim Krotz. And we thank you so much for listening to our radio broadcast each week. We thank you for letting us know uh, that you listen to our radio broadcast as well. That is a great blessing. I pray the Lord to help us today as we continue in Psalm 16 together. Uh, we'll pray together here in just a moment, and we'll get started. Uh, you can visit our church website if you'd like more information about our church, our service times, our church location, uh, what we believe. There's also messages on the website as well that you're free to download and listen to. And so if you need more information, please check our website, BearTrailBaptistChurch.com. We're also on Facebook and YouTube as well. Uh, you can check out some of the preaching videos there if you would like. All right, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us today. Father, we sure love you. We sure thank you for loving us. We sure thank you for saving us and being so good to us. Lord, would you help us today? I realize that I can do nothing without your help. I pray that you would use us to be a help and a blessing to your people. And Lord, we'll sure thank you and we'll sure love you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we've been in Psalm 16 for a little while now. We probably have at least uh, this week and one more week in Psalm 16 as well. It's a great psalm in the Bible, that's for sure. Many of the psalms are great psalms. This is a great psalm. Uh, this Psalm 16, the heading says, A Mitchum of David. And that simply means that it's deserving of being written in gold. It is also a prophetic psalm, or I should say, a, um, well, forgot the term all of a sudden. It's a messianic psalm. There we go. That's what it is. Uh, there's some verses of scripture, especially at the end of the psalm, that are repeated in the New Testament concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in verse number one, Psalm 16, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. So we have the preservation prayer of David in verse number one. Verse number two says, O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee. So in verse number two, we have the uh, perception and praise of David. Verse number three, the Bible says, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Verse number three, we see the pleasure from saints. Verse number four, the Bible says, the sorrows shall be, their, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God, their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. In verse number four, we see the problem with idolatry. Verse five and six, we'll see the portion of the saints. The Bible says, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. In verse number seven, we see the principles from God. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. Now, verse number eight is where we've been for the last couple of weeks, and we'll probably be there the remainder of the broadcast today. Verse number eight, we see in David, here in this psalm, we see the persistent, purposeful heart. And friend, if there's ever been a time, and I'm sure there have been, if there's ever been a time when we need a persistent, purposeful heart, it is the day and time that we live in. David said in verse number eight of this psalm, I have set the Lord always before me. We've talked about that in, in pretty great detail over the last few weeks, uh, how that we need to set the Lord before us. We talked about many things in the Bible uh, that are before us. Some of those are good things. Some of those are not so good things. 
Nevertheless, there are many things before us. Should the Lord allow us to uh, live, we're going to face pain. We're going to uh, face problems. But I'm glad that we can also rely on the fact that there are also provision before us. God will never forsake us. God will never leave us. God will never uh, uh, leave us without. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. So there are many things before us, but David said, I have set the Lord always before me. And I'll tell you, you and I need to set the Lord before us. Here's why that is so important. In this Psalm, he said, I've set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. Now, I, I tell you, a lot of folks have this mentality or this idea that the Lord is before them, but he's not at their right hand. They the, maybe they have him before him in their mind only, but certainly not in their heart and in their actions. But David said, he's at my right hand. He's on my, he's on my strong side. He is, he is what I'm leaning to. He is my strength. He is my support. And so he, now here's the result of that. He said, I shall not be moved. Now, listen, because David has set the Lord before him, he said, I shall not be moved. Now, we spent the entirety of the last broadcast talking about things that cause Christians to move. We've talked about the deception in doctrine. And I'll tell you, false doctrine will cause you to be moved away from your fellowship and your desire to worship and serve the true and living God. It'll cause you to be moved away from your desire to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is deception and doctrine that causes people to be moved. There is incomplete development that causes people to be moved. Now we're talking about spiritual immaturity and ignorance of the Word of God. These things can create instability. We use the scripture there talking about a novice in, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 6. So listen, having a novice in a place of leadership or in a position of authority often causes not only that individual, but those he is leading to be moved. There is an incomplete development. Uh, also, something else that causes folks to be moved is a lack of spiritual depth. When people are not grounded in the truths of Scripture and uh, their relationship with Jesus Christ, they can be swayed or persuaded to follow false doctrine and false religious ideas. And of course, we see that on a continual basis. Then another thing that causes people to be moved is being double-minded. Listen, a person who tries to serve the Lord and also live worldly and ungodly and follow the things of the world, they are very unstable in their Christian life and they're easily moved away from the truth. In fact, the Bible says in the book of James, chapter 1, verse number 8, that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. My friend, we are certainly living in times when we are seeing a, a, a lack of stability among professing Christians in the day that we live in. There's also another thing that causes people to be moved is a displeasure with the scriptures. Listen, even if you are of the mindset or the mentality that you're not going to vocally express your displeasure with the scriptures, the very fact that you live your life in complete contradiction of what the Bible says is evident that you have displeasure with the scriptures. And so those things cause you to be moved away from fellowship with believers. It causes you to be moved away from fellowship with God. It certainly renders you completely ineffective as far as being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there are displeasure with the scriptures. Number six, the things that cause people to be moved is worldly distractions. Listen, when a person's heart is turned away from the Lord, he is certainly facing the wrong direction. And I believe that a lot of God's people, folks who've been born again, folks who've been saved, are facing the wrong direction in the day that we're living in. Here's where we got to, and here's where we'll begin today. We got to number seven, and that is a disregard for the Lord. Now, you say, preacher, how in the world? We're, we're preaching to Christians primarily. We're preaching to believers. 
How in the world can you say that one of the things that is causing people to be moved is their disregard for the Lord? Well, let me put it this way. The Christian life is a constant battle of wheels. It is always our wheel versus God's wheel. Listen, friend, this is not a yearly thing. This is not a monthly thing. This is not a weekly thing. This is a daily battle. Our rotten flesh has not yet been redeemed, and I'm looking forward to the day that it is, but our rotten flesh has not yet been redeemed, and so our wheel is in constant battle with God's wheel, and when we become self-willed, I promise you, friend, when we become self-willed, we reject what God has to say, and when we do that, we become very unstable. Listen, I, let, me, let me say a couple of things here. Many folks have found that when they got what they wanted, it was not what they expected. They got what they wanted, but they lost what they had. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of folks today, now I'm, I think they've probably got what they wanted. They got what their flesh wanted. They got what their will desired, but it certainly has taken them a long way away from God. Most of the time, when we get what we wanted, we lose the thing that we desire the most, and that is still ability with God. Hey, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number one, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So let me just say this while I'm passing. God is a merciful God. Amen. And I'm glad that he is. I, I am as thankful as anybody, more so than most, that our God is a merciful God because I understand and I realize how greatly I need his mercy. So the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, I want to say this as well. Not only is our God a merciful God, He is not an unreasonable God. He is a very reasonable God. Now, He may ask you or require some things of you that in your mind and in your flesh may seem unreasonable, but I promise you, friend, when you're in fellowship with God, when you're in God's will, when you are desiring the way of God, you will easily understand that his way is not unreasonable at all. So I got off on a couple of little things there, but he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen, I, I love the Bible. The Bible is very clear. The Bible is very complete. In fact, sometimes I am, uh, as much as I know how honest and how true and how holy the scripture is, I am never ceased to be amazed at the clarity of scripture. Notice that in this passage, in this passage of scripture, that when we get sideways with God, it is our mind that must be renewed. Listen, salvation is not renewed. The relationship is not renewed. The spiritual battle and the spiritual warfare is between our ears, amen. It is our mind and heart. Our mind and our heart must be right with God to be in the will of God. And so God help us to renew our mind on the things of God. And so how do we get away from God? There is a disregard guard for the Lord. Number eight, there is degenerate friends. Listen, friend, the wrong crowd can have a, a big influence for bad in a person's life. Many Christians have backslidden because of carnal friends that they keep company with. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 and verse 21, it says, my son, fear thou the Lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change. That word meddle means to take part. And so it says meddle not. So we do not take part with them that are given to change. Let me say this. We're living in a day when many, 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 
professing Christians or believers, or they may be saved, I don't know, but they have certainly given to change, and especially lately. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that a meddle not with them that are given to change. Why is that? For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Listen, this verse has never been more clear and never been more important than it is in the day and time that we live with. Listen, friend, you need to start walking with wise men. You need to start seeking the counsel of individuals who are speaking wisely. Preacher, how do I know if someone's speaking wisely? Are they following biblical truth? Are they speaking biblical truth? If they are, that's the folks that you need to follow. I'm afraid that a lot of well and well meaning and saved people have begun to lean their ear toward those who are worldly, toward those who are following after the common man and the fleshly man, and they have ceased to follow after the godly man and the man that speaks wisdom from the Bible. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33 says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Listen, if you're trying to raise and to teach your children what is right and what is wrong, and then you allow them to spend all their time with worldly, ungodly friends, listen, friend, you're deceived into thinking that your children would turn out the same way regardless of who their friends are. Listen, if your children were as spiritual as you thought they were, that would not be their type of friend to begin with. And so I promise you, friend, the Bible says that evil communications corrupt good manners. I talked about your children How about you? Who are your friends? You were one time faithful in the house of God. You were one time faithful with the people of God. You one time spent all of your time uh, studying the Bible, learning the Bible, hearing preaching, being involved in the work of God and the ministry of the Lord. But all of a sudden, your friends have become carnal friends and you're no longer interested in the things of God. You're no longer concerned about the house of God. You're no longer concerned about being involved in the ministry ministry of God. You know what's happened, friend? Your heart and your mind have been taken away from the word of God. You know what David said? David said, I have set the Lord always before me. He is ever at my right hand and I shall not be moved. I'm afraid, friend, that you, many of you who are listening today, have allowed your worldly friends to take you away from God, to take you away from the house of God, to take you away from the worship of God, take you away from the ministry of God and to take you away from witnessing for God. You become carnal minded. Your life is full of worldly things and ungodly things and you have no concern and no desire for the things of God. You have degenerate friends. Amen. Now, number nine, number nine, doubt and discouragement will take you away from the things of God. When when a person begins to doubt God, the door is open for Satan to make his move. In fact, Satan used this very tactic on Eve in the Garden of Eden when he challenged what God said. Listen, we're never to put a question mark where God put a period. Friend, we're living in a time there. Listen, the Bible's not changed. God's word has not changed. God has not changed his mind. This pandemic has not scared him. This pandemic has not caught him off guard. He's not changed a single message that he designed at the beginning. You know what has happened to you? You have allowed Satan to put a question mark where God put a period. And that has caused doubt and has caused discouragement in your life. Listen, if you find yourself beginning, I put this quote on social media this past week. If you find yourself beginning to doubt what God said, then doubt your doubts instead of doubting God. The typical man will believe his doubts and doubt his beliefs. Don't be a typical man be a man of faith. The Bible says in James chapter one and verse number five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that waveth is like a we- the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise. Listen, God, 
God made us some, some promises in the Bible, and he's faithful that made those promises. Why aren't we faithful to obey them? Amen. Hey, the demeanor of pride will cause us to be moved away from our steadfastness with God. Here, the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Paul W. Powell once said this. He said, pride is so subtle that if we aren't careful, we'll be proud of our humility. When this happens, our goodness becomes badness. Our virtues become vices. We can easily become like the Sunday school teacher who having told the story of the Pharisee and the publican said, children, let's bow our heads and thank God that we are not like the Pharisee. Listen, pride only sees the faults in others. It never takes an inward look itself. Listen, friend, if all you can do is see the faults in others, then you have pride in your heart. We tend to think that we're pretty good because we're comparing ourselves among ourselves. But when we realize that the best of men are only men, and the Bible declares in Isaiah 64 and verse number six, but we are all as an unclean thing and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Listen, friend, this is why we cannot compare ourselves or compare our lives with what to what others are or are not doing. We must remember that Jesus Christ is our example. The Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse number twelve, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So listen, friend, the demeanor of pride will cause you to be moved away from your steadfastness in the things of God. Here's 11. Here's number 11. And the last one, dishonesty. The Bible says in Proverbs 28 and verse number 18, Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. Now, I want you to understand, this is not talking about salvation from sin. If it were, it would be a contradiction in Scripture because it would be a works-based salvation. So what does it mean? Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. But, 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 he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. So clearly from this verse of scripture, we see that if we walk uprightly, we shall be saved from falling. The Bible here, the word perverse here in this passage of scripture means willfully determined to go contrary to what is expected or desired. And so God has some expectations of his people. There's some things that God desires for the people of God. And uh, when we walk uprightly, we will be saved from falling. But when we walk contrary to what God desires of us or what God expects of us, then we should expect nothing nothing less than falling, amen. Listen, if you're, not, if you're not willing to be honest in your dealings with God and with others, you will be very unstable as a Christian. Friend, we, we have some extremely unstable Christians in the day that we're living in. We're living in a world that promotes dishonesty. We're living in a world that promotes unjust living. God help us not to be conformed to the ways of this world, but to walk uprightly as Christ would have us to walk. Now, come back to Psalm 16 in our text. I got to hurry. Psalm 16, our text says this in verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Now, we have looked at what causes us to fall or be moved. Now, let's look at the Bible. Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible teaches us that we can do to avoid falling or being moved away from God. What are some things that we can do to not be moved? First of all, we can put our trust in the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 125, verse number one, says, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. Now, why, why is that comparison? Because of this which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Listen, I want to trust in the Lord because if our trust is in the Lord, we cannot be moved. Now, it's been several weeks ago, but do you remember where this psalm began in verse number one? David said in verse number one, Pervert, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my 
trust. Listen, friend, if our trust is in God, if our trust is in the Lord, we will not be moved. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Listen, if we are trusting the Lord and he is directing our paths, we will not be moved away from fellowship with him and we will not be removed from fellowship with his people. We will not be forsaking the house of God. We won't be forsaken forsaking the work of God, will not be forsaken the ministries of God. If we faithfully trust in him and not ourselves, not our abilities, not our talents, not someone else, but trust in him. If we trust him, we will never be moved. I, I tell you, the day that we live in, I wish people would put as much trust in God as they're putting in doctors. I wish they'd put as much trust in God as they're putting in the medical world. I wish they would put as much, tr- listen, friend, we are to trust the Lord. Not one time does the Bible tell us to trust a physician. Not one time does the Bible tell us to pr- trust a lawyer. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. I, incur- I challenge you today, friend, where is your trust? Here we go. We are to trust in the Lord. Second of all, we, um, we're talking about what can we do to not be moved. We trust in the Lord. Second of all, we comfort and receive comfort from other believers. Listen, there will be times when we are in a position to offer comfort. And there's going to be times in our life where we are going to need comforting. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, Verse number one, the Bible says, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. Verse number two says, And sent Timotheus, our brother, and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you, and and to comfort you concerning your faith. Why is that? Verse number three, that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Now listen, Paul, he realized that the church of Thessalonica was suffering, but they were suffering for their faith in Christ. And so he sent Timotheus to comfort them. Listen, when you and I, when we see others struggling with their faith, when we see others struggling with their faithfulness, We should be comforting toward them. We should be encouraging them. We should be desiring to help them. We should be interested in teaching and ministering to them along the way. If we're not careful, afflictions will cause us to be moved. It'll cause us to be moved away from our steadfastness. And we need to guard against that and help others to overcome when they're facing afflictions in their life. So we're talking about what can we do to not be moved. First of all, we trust the Lord. Second of all, we offer comfort and receive comfort from other believers. Here's the last one. I got to hurry. We need to realize that the Lord is the keeper of our soul. Listen, sound doctrine is one of the greatest enemies against being moved away from the truth. The Bible says in Psalm 121 and verse number one, He said, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber or sleep. Listen, man is very weak and frail. We both slumber and sleep, amen. But the Bible says in verse number five, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The the sun shall not snot might thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forever. Listen, preserve means to keep or save from injury or destruction, to defend from evil, to uphold, to sustain. Listen, friend, I'm looking for the Lord to preserve me. I'm not looking for Dr. Fauci to preserve me. I'm looking for the Lord to preserve me and to keep me. The Bible says in Psalm 62, verse number six, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Hey, you say, preacher, all of that's in the Old Testament. Well, the New Testament says this in 2 Timothy chapter four and verse number 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work 
work and will preserve me. The same word used in Strong in Psalms, amen, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Listen, friend, the reason that he gets all the glory is because we can do nothing to keep ourselves. If we could keep ourselves, we would be boasting in ourselves, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Listen, I'm grateful for the goodness of God. I'm grateful for the salvation of God. What a blessing it is to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Our time is quickly coming and going again today as it always does. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Barrett Baptist Church broadcast. May God bless you until we have the privilege to meet again is our prayer. Amen. Thank you so much for watching on social media. That's a great blessing to us. Please like and share the broadcast. Until next week, may God bless you. Goodbye.